Well, can you confirm to me, or is it just me that I feel like I'm bursting with energy with this kind of yeah. diet? You, you feel the same way. Well, well, you know, when I first started, um, so I started my journey on January 11th of 2019. And before that, what I did was three days before that, I did a water fast. And the only reason why, Lally, that I did a water fast is because I wanted to kind of clean out my system. When I did that water fast, I knew nothing. So I drank water, I drank coffee, I didn't even drink um, electrolytes drink or anything for those first three days. So um, then on January 14th, I weighed in at 255.9 pounds Okay. after a three day water fast. So my highest weight was 265. Okay. So what I had decided to do is I had taken that plan that I talked to you about and I decided that I was going to eat on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And I was going to have my salad with my protein in it. And it'd be different salads or whatever, but I would have my protein in it. And then I ate within that one hour. So I actually jumped in from a three-day water fast right into a one-hour eating window. And no, actually, I take that back. The first week, it was a four-hour eating window, even though I only ate within one hour. But I gave myself the four hours. And um, the following week, I realized, okay, well, you gave yourself four hours, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and you really ate within one hour, so you're fine. So I did Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I ate between 12 and 1. On Saturdays, I ate with my husband, and I ate between 2 and 3. And then at 3 o'clock on Saturday, I ate nothing, Um, but I drank plenty. So... Then I didn't eat Sunday and I didn't eat Monday. And I did that as an extended fast to kind of help heal my skin. Because um, as we get older, we lose the electricity in our skin. Of course we do, you know. (laughs) It can't be anything easy for us women. So I I decided I had such a belly when I first started. I looked like maybe like I was eight months pregnant and... I kind of panicked and I said to myself, you know what, the way you're eating, if you're going to lose weight, you're going to have an apron, you're going to have a big belly at the end that's hanging. So I decided that at the end of February that I was going to take my pictures in my bra and underwear just so I could notice the difference in my skin doing the extended fasting. That's why I preach it so much. You know, take your weekly pictures. The scale does not define you. The the scale is going to say one number, but you're going to feel so much better. Uh, Your clothes are going to fit better. You're going to feel that you have so much more energy. And the longer you stay with it, you don't even have to think about it. So I did my 68 to 72 hour extended fast every week. And I kept that the same the whole year. And when I, I had set my goal, because people will ask me, well, did you do, oh, I'm going to lose 25 pounds and see how I do, or I'm going to set a goal for 50 pounds. What did you do, Maria? And I tell them, this was what I set for myself. I said, the lowest I've ever weighed in my life was 166 pounds. So I said, okay, I was in my 20s. So I'm going to set a goal for 155 to 150 pounds. Well, when I met you at the summit in August, seven months and two days into my journey, when I met you, I had already lost 107.8 pounds. So I had already surpassed my own goal weight because when I got to you, I was already under 148 pounds. So at that point, I said to myself, okay, what I'm doing is working. You have a lot more energy. Uh, I was so excited because all my life I've been anemic. I've always had to take iron pills. And we all know that those iron pills are like horse pills. And I had to take, I think it was like 10,000 milligrams a day because I was anemic. 
I don't have to take that anymore. Uh, I've never had high blood pressure. So I've been lucky with that, but I have low blood sugar. So I have to be careful that when I fast, you don't want to, because you're going to get dizzy when you, in the beginning, I don't know if it happened to you, you get a headache, uh, you're feeling a little nauseous. Um, so because I have low blood pressure, even when I was heavy, I would get like that. I would get dizzy. I would have headaches. So when I decided to continue on and start my maintenance at that point, I said, oh, I'm going to, because I was still fairly new. Cause you remember, I have now lost half my size in 10 months and two weeks. Mm -hmm. So starting maintenance, maintenance was new for me and I did not want to gain weight. So what I did every week, Lally, what I did was I upped my calories uh, when I ate by 50 calories and by two or three or four net carbs. And then I just kept going until now where before I was eating 1,000 to 1,100 calories when I ate. I'm eating now between 14 and 1,500 calories. And my net carbs are anywhere between 35 and 45 net carbs that I eat. And the scale is not moving. And that's where I want. I don't want to lose anymore, but I want to stay where I'm at. And the energy is great. I sleep better. Uh, I feel so much better. And what I would love, and I tell everyone this all the time, what I would love is to let people know that the person that stares back at you in the mirror is the person that needs you the most. And if you're gonna make this life change, it has to be made for that person. The excuses we give ourselves is, well, my husband won't eat keto. Uh, you know, my kids, they like their snacks. Well, that's great. I understand. It's not their journey, but I have to take care of them. I have to put them first. My motto is we mind our hearts and not our minds. And if you do not put yourself first, doesn't matter how much you love your husband and your children and your parents. If you keep going the way you're going, like me, if I kept going the way I was going, I'd be 300 pounds. And then I'd go up 350 and I keep going. So if I did not put myself first and start taking care of me, what good would I be to my parents and my husband and my children? You know, we have to stop with the excuses. Is it easy in the beginning? Absolutely not. But isn't everything that's worth fighting for a little hard? It doesn't make it, it's impossible. It's not impossible. Everything is possible when you just set your heart to everything that you want to do and believe in yourself. And with this mindset, you will never hear me say a keto diet. Um, I say this is a new lifestyle because to me, it is a new lifestyle. I have changed my way of eating. I do not eat potatoes. I don't eat rice. I don't eat pasta. I don't eat bread. But I had someone say to me, you don't eat pasta. I'm Italian. We love pasta. I said, I don't eat pasta. I didn't say I didn't eat any pasta. I make my own pasta. So I make my own homemade lasagna. I make my own keto pasta. I make stuffed peppers. I do all kinds of things that I used to do before, except I'm replacing the high carb stuff with the hardly no carb stuff. So guess what? When I feed my family the lasagna and I don't tell them it's keto lasagna, they go, hey, mom, my husband goes, hey, babe, can I have another piece of that? That's really good. And they're non-keto. So they're eating my food without knowing it's actually good for you. And it being good for you is great because my dad, I got my dad down from, my dad's a diabetic. My dad went from three injections a day, two diabetic pills a day to one injection as needed. No more blood pressure medicine from my mom and dad. No more cholesterol medicine from my mom and dad. These are all benefits of this change. Now, I have a lot of people say to me, 
well, does that mean I'm never going to be able to eat bread? Well, no, you can eat bread, but get the correct bread or make a keto bread. Um, but if you make this change to lose the weight and then you turn around and you go back to eating the potatoes, the rice, the pasta, the bread, the candy, the cookies, you literally just sabotaged everything you've worked so hard for. And Lally, I don't know about you, but me, I've worked too hard to be where I am today to go back to eat that way. So I enjoy my coffee still with just a little bit. You drink black though. Oh, uh, this is tea because I'm going to be going to bed and uh, in the morning it's coffee, of course. With yeah. a little bit of heavy, heavy cream. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, very little for me. Um, I had a lot of people say to me, oh, but that's going to break your fast. No, because if you keep your calories under 25, your fast will not break. And the other thing, which is really important, because I don't know like what your eating window is, but my eating window, I kept it within one hour. I, I suggest always to eat earlier during the day. So you have the rest of your day to digest your food. And by the time you go to bed, you do not have to worry about going to bed on a full stomach. And then your body takes that, all that food that has not been digested and it turns it into fat. It stores it into fat, you know? So when we start this way of eating, we, by not giving ourselves all those high carb foods, eventually our body is going to start eating away at the fat that is stored in our body. Henceforth, when we take our pictures every two, three months of our skin pictures, I noticed. And, and I showed you my book. Remember? You yeah. signed it. Yeah. And I showed you the transformation and that was just like at 107 pounds. The skin heals itself. This way of eating will not only heal you from the inside out, you're going to feel so much better, have so much more energy, and you're going to notice that, you, okay, so you'll have a little bat wings, but keep going, keep it, going, it, it and you're going to notice that your skin is going to heal itself. Yeah. That's what yes. I've been explaining to some people that I was able to in, inspire and do this keto I said that in the beginning, you will have some, you know, um, saggy neck and all that. And eventually, um, especially coupled with intermittent fasting and then um, autophagy and collagen, bone broth and all that, it uh, all worked together and does the magic. So That's right. But you have to give it time. Yes. You know, and, and a lot of people... All right, so I'm going to tell you my real age because that's, I think I told you when I was in, in, uh, at the summit, but I always say I'm 38. I have been 38 for over a decade. I am not 38. Uh, I'm 54. And people say to me, no, you're not. You're not 50. There's no way you're 54. Well, you look 10, 15 years younger than you did in your first picture, you know, in my first picture. And, and I said, well, you know, that has to do with the way that I'm eating. And the way that I'm eating, you take this picture and I look, I look 15 years older here and I'm not. I am three years younger in this book than I am today. And, and your energy awesome. that time oh. on to this day, it's like you can't even imagine how it was before because I was also heavy before I started. So yeah, I give props to you, Maria, for that one. And uh, there's just too many people that you can help. Uh, there is, and it has to all do with your mindset. Mm -hmm. They, you know, and a lot of people that I coach are, a lot of them are over 400 pounds and they've reached their limit of, they've given up. 
they feel like there's no one out there that's going to help me. Everybody's trying to have me buy these pills and uh, have me um, drink these shakes. And I've tried Slim Fast. I've tried this, Maria. I can't. I can't. And I'm like, I got you. I understand. I've done all of it. I've done the weight loss, um, Weight Watchers, um, Slim Fast. Uh, Nutra system. I've done all that. Yes, I've lost a little bit of weight, but what happens? What happens is because you see it as a diet, then once you lose the weight that you want, the 10 pounds, 20 pounds, 30, you go back doing the same thing you were doing before. Well, the key to keto is take your meal and eat it the earliest in the day as you possibly can, but fill yourself up with your salads and your vegetables and, and your protein and fill yourself and, and apple cider vinegar is like a blessing. I don't know if you, you add, but I add it to everything. I love it. Yeah. Last so I had a tablespoon or two. Just yeah. I started that. I started that actually two days ago. Um, I started cause I'd listened to Thomas DeLawler, you know, we met mm -hmm. him at the summit yeah. and, uh, and I follow him and he follows me actually. And that was, that was like really surprising, but um, he, uh, he does the um, apple cider vinegar, two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar with water. So I've been doing that now. Um, and like I said, everything that I do has to do with me trying now to heal, continue healing my skin. I had a meeting with a bunch of girls right after I came back from um, the summit, I got a bunch of women that wanted to lose weight. And I met with them at a Starbucks. We actually went to a Starbucks and I showed them my skin. I actually stood up and I said, guys, at that point, I think I was already down 125 pounds. And I said to them, a lot of them, went to high school with me. So they knew me all my life. I was heavy all my life. So in hey, and here, this is the funny part is they were the skinny ones in high school. And I was always the big girl. I was always the big girl and I'm okay. I mean, I was a big girl. I mean, what are you going to do? You know, I was still beautiful. I just forgot that I was, you know, we're all beautiful, no matter what shape and size we are, we are beautiful, but we have to take care of us inside and on the outside so we can continue to be here for a lot longer. So when I, when I met with my girls, they knew that I had always been heavy. And I said to them, now you guys remember my stomach and they were like, yeah, do you have a lot of hanging skin? Is it like an apron? Cause that's what I'm afraid of. Honest to God, they were afraid to start this new way of eating because they were afraid of what they were going to look like underneath their clothes what <laughs> underneath your clothes i told them i said i'll take a little bit of sag that i have and a little bit of bat wings because it's very little trust me very little and i'll take that over the 54 and a half inches around one thigh one of my thighs was almost 55 inches my waist is 24 and a half inches. Wow. So my waist is smaller than one of my thighs used to be. This way of eating works. It does. It's not a diet. It's a new lifestyle. And it always starts with the person that stares us back in the mirror. Always. Always. Exactly. I hope that and that stick, that will stick a lot and get stuck in their minds. So yes. I Yes. No, but that's what I say. Like even on my page, I have Michelle Zinger's journey on Facebook that I do and on Instagram and on my page, I tell, I remind everyone every single day, this is a mindset, you know, this is a new lifestyle. And if you don't change your mindset, but you're doing this new lifestyle, once you're finished and you go back to what you used to do, you're going to notice that you're going to gain weight. Of course, you're going to gain weight because you've stopped eating all the breads and the pastas and the rice and the potatoes. And then you lost your 30 pounds. You feel great. So 
you start eating the junk again. What happens when we start introducing the high carb food? I'll tell you what happens. We get tired, sluggish, our, our uh, sleeping habits go out the door again. We start feeling achy. And that's what high carbs food do to us. And we don't even realize, you know, like, why am I tired? Like, why does my body hurt? I have not, and I'm always on the go. And um, sometimes I'll say to the girls, I'm really exhausted, but I work seven days a week. So, and when I get home, I'm doing phone consultations. I'm talking to people, I'm inspiring people. I'm trying to get them on a schedule, on an eating schedule, on what they should eat, what they should stay away from. And I will never tell you, you can't have this. I always tell you, aren't you worth more than those Oreo cookies? Aren't you worth more than those potato chips? Because if you want a snack, get some broccoli, get some ranch or pork grinds or some nuts or some sunflower seeds. There's things that we can snack on that are not Oreo cookies, chocolate chip cookies, potato chips, right? Mm -hmm. it's not we don't have to neglect ourselves because I don't I don't neglect myself if I want a cheesecake I will make a cheesecake I will take and I share all my recipes for free on my page so people can try it and the great thing about this is the people that do try my recipes and I tell them don't tell your family it's keto <laughs> and a lady who's Italian made my lasagna and she decided she was going to send the rest of the lasagna home with her son. So this, but she didn't tell him this is a keto lasagna. She didn't tell him. And I have to share this with you because I got so excited when she told me, um, he calls her and he goes, mama Luigi, this is the best lasagna you have ever made. She goes, Maria, I didn't have the heart to tell him it was keto. She didn't have the heart to tell him it was keto. Another one did my pizza. Her son's in California and he was here visiting in, in her state, was visiting and she made the yum yum pizza. Because there's people go, you mean I can never have pizza? I can have, no, you can. You can have all the foods that you used to by replacing the bad things that we put into it with good things, you know? So he actually called her from California and he said, mom, I'm having a gathering with all my friends. And he's like, I, she says he's a movie star, but um, I don't know yet. She goes, Maria, maybe he'll make you famous in California. I said, that'd be great. But um, he actually called her and said, can you explain to me how to make her pizza? Because I've been telling all my friends about it and they don't believe that there's no bread in the pizza because it's made with a mozzarella cheese. I mean, I put out the recipes. I don't charge for the recipes and I put them out so people don't feel like, do I have to eat a salad for the rest of my life? No. <sighs> Am I ever going to be able to have stuffed peppers and pizza and lasagna in a sandwich? Yes. Just not with white flour, just not with regular sugar. Mm -hmm. We have the options available to us. Aren't we worth to give it a try? Exactly. Exactly. Some people would just, you know, are, I would say it's not laziness, but it's like the dependence. Um, well, commercial, commercialism has made us rely and depend on what we get at the groceries. And it's just so sad that we, when we go to the groceries, we'd find 90% in the grocery made up of just carbs. Um, carbs that are in the form of potatoes, um, white flour, um, those kind of things that are really bad for our gut. So I think that it would take a lot especially for a mom like yourself and myself, it has to 
come from all of us. We should be the ones, you know, initiating this, doing this. And we just got so used to it that it's really hard to teach them unlearn it. So Maria, um, what would you, what would you tell whoever's listening to us right now? What would you tell them? What would be your message on how to start this? How to? It's radical, right? It's not an easy thing to do. Um, it's tough. Um, ketosis easily, you lose it easily, and then you easily switch back to glucose fuel. So how would you entice them? Um, there are moments when I'm in the car and I just couldn't stop thinking. I always think. And this is a thing. You're already working, but you still manage to think and um, think of ideas on how to help other people. This is yes. what happened to me. Um, even when I go to bed, I don't easily fall asleep until I put on my eye mask, my magic eye mask, and then I doze off. So I intentionally don't, don't put it on immediately because I know that I will have to be thinking. And I like thinking before I go to bed. And I came to a point where I had told myself, um, how will I be able to um, tell people um, I want to be radical about it. I, I'm very passionate about it. And I think that I should tell them that, um, do you really want to gain weight? Um, try eating round the clock, right? And try eating high carbs. You, For sure, you're going to be getting there. You're going to be gaining weight. And try not to sleep regularly. You know, just the heck with sleeping, just sleep late, wake up late and miss yeah. some pills and then wake up tired and hungry, right. angry. Oh, so, and so angry. Cool. We get yeah. so moody with the yeah. carbs. We get so when moody. When you do that, for sure, you're going to get better. You're going to gain weight. So, right. so it's opposite all that. We right. try to eat less frequent meaning we don't produce that much insulin anymore and we become more sensitive to insulin. Hence, we will be further away from developing diabetes. But this came about with me. I just thought that, you know, I, I, I'm doing a lot of bad things with my body. I'm right. snacking when I turn on the TV at night, when I hit the bed, I watch and just three minutes in the movie, I pause it and say to myself, what should I be munching on? So I go down and grab me some bags of Cheetos or Doritos. And then I go up and I have a mini, mini ref in my room. And as soon as a movie or two movies done, um, in the morning, I would wake up. Of course, I'm going to sleep late. I'd find like maybe three cans of regular Coca-Cola and two bags of chips. That was the old me. Right. Um, yeah. And I just did it. Um, how do you say it? Cold turkey? I did what? cold turkey. Yeah. So that's what I did because I told myself if I keep on going this way, I'm going to be dead soon. And who's going to yeah. take care of my kids? I want well, there. I want to hear that, Maria. That, exactly, and that's and that's key because um, if we keep going and if we keep eating that way, we are just going to continue to gain weight. And by making it just a different lifestyle, just changing a few things here and there. And what I do with the girls that I coach. I find out a little bit about themselves and see how much they'd like to lose. I never ask anyone, how much do you need to lose? I always say, how much would you like to lose? Because to me, there's people that weigh 150 pounds and they feel great in their skin and in their body and they're happy. And that's great. Um, you could still change the way of eating so you could actually feel better. Um, but not to lose weight. If you're happy at 150 pounds, then stay at 150 pounds. So I always say, how much would you like to lose? And then if they have a lot to lose, I will start them because they're new 
I always suggest four hour eating window for two weeks. So I say, listen, you want to try this, try it for two weeks, weigh yourself first, take your before pictures, save them on your phone, get on the scale, do your measurements, get yourself a journal. And I tell everyone this, get yourself a journal right in there every single day. Do you want to write your weight, your measurements at first? That's how you're going to start that you have a four hour eating window and you're going to eat between 11 and three or 12 and four. I suggest to them always to make sure it be key. It'd be great if you're done eating by four and you don't eat anything else, especially if you're going to bed by 10 o'clock. Um, the earlier you eat, the better it is for you. So a lot of the ladies that I have will eat between 11 and three and be done at three. Some of them that I have do 12 to four in the beginning. I have two of them, I believe, their last meal is at six because they want to eat with their family and they're losing weight slower, but they're still losing, but they're losing weight slower. And one of them actually uh, hit a plateau. And what I, what I did by talking to them was I found out, well, she's eating at six. She's finished at seven. She was in bed by eight 30. Oh. Well, that's not good. You want to eat earlier during the day. If you could eat earlier during the day, it gives you, gives your body all that time to digest your food. So when you're going to bed, you have nothing to, um, for the, for the body to store it as fat. Okay. So I always suggest eat earlier, be done no later than four and give yourself the minimum of five hours after you finished eating before you go to bed. I, I tell everyone no soda. Mm -hmm. I have someone that says, well, I drink a diet Pepsi, three diet Pepsis a day. I said, well, you know what? In the beginning I was nice. And I said to her, okay, <laughs> for the first two weeks, you could have one diet soda a week. You could have one because eventually I want you to, you know, not have it. Um, and she did. She had that one and the following week she had another one. But as she started seeing her weight come off every time she was getting on the scale, it was so much easy for her to give up because she was like, oh my God, Maria, I lost six pounds. Just, I had a plateau. I hadn't lost anything. And I did exactly what you told me to do. I lost six pounds this week. That's awesome. The following week, she, following week, she lost three, three point seven pounds. So, um, so when I talk to them, I write notes. So I have like, if I talk to you and I'm coaching you, I have notes on you. So when we keep up with each other, I kind of say to you, "How are you doing? How are you feeling? Any are you having any issues? You know, be mindful to drink your electrolytes drink." I hear, I don't know if you guys have it there, but I drink Power 80 or Gatorade Zero. I tried to make my own electrolytes drinks and I can't, I can't stomach it. So, and I'm always so extremely busy. It's just easier for me to just go buy it at the store. The Power 80, mm -hmm. I drink one bottle. When I'm doing my extended fasting, I have a 32 um, ounce bottle that I take about this much out of, I fill it up with water, okay? I drink that throughout the day and then I take that little bit that I left behind, put it back in the bottle and add a little bit more water and then that's what I take home on my way home from work. And um, if you don't wanna start cold turkey, cause I know a lot of people can't, I say, keep it simple, give yourself four hours be done eating by four, the latest. After four, do not put anything in your mouth, not even if it's a keto snack. Stay away from any of, and all of that. Mm -hmm. Make sure you drink plenty of water. Make sure you have your electrolytes drink, your tea, your coffee. And if you're going to have coffee, just make sure that if you're gonna put MCT oil or if you're gonna put collagen powder in your coffee, be mindful of the calories. Because as you know, collagen 
has calories. So if you're putting the collagen in your coffee and your MCT oil, and then your creamer, you're literally, your coffee is an entire meal yeah. in calories. I had someone that was putting, we found out after we figured it out, she was putting over 500 calories in her coffee. Yeah. But she was doing everything right. She was fasting. She was, she was down to two hour eating window. She was doing great. And then she decided without saying anything to me that she was going to start adding the MCT oil, the collagen, the creamer, all of that stuff. And she goes, Maria, I hit a plateau. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. And I said, well, you were doing so great. What's going on? And, she, and by talking to her, I found out that she had found out the benefits of MCT oil because there is great benefits. And collagen, she decided to add it at six o'clock in the morning when she was only eating at one o'clock in the afternoon. So I said to her, you've broken your fast at six o'clock in the morning. And she said, how? I'm not eating, mm -hmm. but you don't have to eat. If you're drinking more than 25 calories, it's going to break your fast. So keep that in mind. If you want your tea or you want your coffee, you want to make sure it's just a dash of cream in it. And just keep it simple. If you love salads, have salads, broccoli, cauliflower, steamed vegetables with your protein. Um, I have them, like I said, four hour eating window. I tell them, here are the recipes. They're on my page. If you want to do salads one day, do salads. If you want to do a crustless quiche, do a crustless quiche. You want to do lasagna, do lasagna. You want to do a broccoli casserole, do a broccoli casserole. All those recipes, all the carbs and the calories are right underneath. So it, it could, I make it so easy so you can go, you know what? I want to stay. I have a lot of weight to lose. I have over a hundred pounds to lose. So I want to stay at between a thousand to 1100 calories when I eat. That's because what, that's what I did for me. Um, if you only have 30 or 40 or 50 pounds to lose, I, I always suggest that you start at 11, between 1100 and 1200 calories. So it's the more weight you have to lose, I would suggest you do what I did. Uh, if you have less weight to lose, you could up your carbs and you could up your calories, but still eat within that eating window and stay away from eating so late in, during the day and stay away from the high carbs. Because we have a lot of people that buy like just keto cookies and all that stuff. Just be mindful that if you're going to have that snack, if you're going to have that snack outside your eating window, then you're eat, you've just extended your eating window. So that's all things that are mindful. And the other thing is that's hard on people too. And like we were talking about the grocery store, the sad part is it's very expensive to eat healthy, but it's very inexpensive to eat unhealthy. And it makes it hard for us. That's why we buy the boxes of macaroni and cheese. That's why we buy the boxes of spaghetti that are 50 cents or 80 cents. And we could feed our whole family with a pound of spaghetti. And it's very hard to say to somebody, you know, the summer's coming. Well, well uh, I can have all kinds of fruit, right? Well, yes, but, but be mindful that fruit is also very high in carbs yeah. and also has natural sugar. So if you're, for me, I didn't introduce any fruit into my way of eating until I was probably three or four months in and I do berries. So blackberries, raspberries, blueberries, and strawberries. I don't eat bananas. I don't eat um, apples. I don't eat any of that. Now, that Very being good. said, no uh, oranges, no oranges as well. No, I, I ate a tangerine, you know, those little tangerines. Do you have them there? The little halos, they're called halos. Yeah. Do you know what's, how many carbs are in one little one? How many? Are you have, have you ever looked? No, <laughs> I've never touched it. The teeny ones are 17 and the little ones that are a little larger are anywhere between 24 and 27 carbs.
not net carbs, carbs. 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 Okay. You so know how yeah. I found out? You know how I found out? How? I was, or I had already lost probably a hundred pounds and I, my daughter was coming to visit and I buy them for the house because she loves them. And I was sitting in the living room and I thought to myself, oh, you know what? I'm just going to have one because, you know, I've already lost a hundred. I think I was down 110 pounds, 115. I remember I'm going to have one. So I ate one. Oh God, it was so good because I haven't had one in so long. So I'm sitting there and I'm just like, savoring the deliciousness and i said ah, honest to god as god is my witness i said ah, well another one's not gonna hurt still not thinking so i went and grabbed another one lally i know you're laughing <laughs> so i went and grabbed another one and i peel it and i eat the first just a little link i just eat it and something clicked maria how many carbs are in this so I took out my phone and I Googled it and I spit that thing out. I said, well, you've already, you're done for the day because you've already had 17 carbs, <laughs> you know, from that little itty bitty nothing. I ate itty bitty nothing. And did it hurt me? No, it didn't hurt me. But I don't know about you, but I could probably eat three, four of those little tangerines, you know, because I love them so much. So that's when I decided that when I was going to try something different, like a, a piece of fruit or bake, like I make this banana nut bread. I use two bananas in that nut bread. But here's the thing, when people go, well, you just said about the fruit, yes, but now I'm on maintenance and I'm not really eating two bananas. If I'm making a loaf and using two bananas, I'm spreading that all those carbs and that calories of those two bananas throughout the whole loaf. And that's how I get my net carbs. So it doesn't mean you can't have it. There is a way for you to still enjoy the food that we used to enjoy to a certain extent. But the tangerines, like I make this, um, um, this berry sauce for my cheesecakes. And I will use the, the, the fruit to make my berry sauce, but you're only putting a little bit on. And again, the carbs and the calories are spread out. So, yeah. So I tell everybody, if you're going to try it this way of eating, stay away from everything that is not berries. If it doesn't end in a berry, if the word does not end in a berry, stay away from it. So strawberries, uh, strawberries, raspberries, blackberries, blueberries are a-okay to a certain extent. Because you buy a little container of blueberries, you sit and watch TV. I don't know about you. I could eat that whole container. So what I did for my snacks was I made sugar-free jello. I took the sugar-free jello, about four ounces of sugar-free jello, put it on a plate. I cut up um, maybe two strawberries, a couple of, I even cut up the blueberries, the raspberries and the blackberries. I put it all into a quarter cup, the cut up already. I threw it on top of my um, sugar-free Jello, and then I took one or two tablespoons of Cool Whip, put it on top, and I was still within my calories, I was still within my carbs, and I enjoyed the dessert. So you're not neglecting yourself, you're not. You're just making the right food choices. Correct, the right food at the right time. Absolutely, and the time is key, time yes. is key. Yes. So it's morning where it's the best time to, you know, load on food. And right. when the day gets, you know, later and later, if you just stop eating, that's what you do. So stop around 4 p.m. Have you ever had like maybe um, have you dreamt and you're fasting, you know, that you're fasting before you slept and you dreamt that you ate something and wake up telling yourself, oh, thank God, it's just a dream. In my dream, I ate like a, a roasted pig, a, a bite of a roasted pig. So yeah, does it ever happen to you? Do you ever I have, have um, dreams? No, I didn't, I, I never, I don't remember that I ever had um, a 
food dreams or anything like that. I didn't, I think, I think what I did for myself that really helped me is when on January 14th, I stood in front of the mirror and I just had that heart to heart with myself. I just talked to myself like I'm talking to you right now. I stood in front of the mirror and talked to myself and I gave myself the permission to put myself first. I gave myself the permission to forgive myself for letting others rule, you know, abuse and verbally and mentally abuse me and, and, and me never putting myself first in any equation because everyone else was more important than I was. And I wrote myself inspirational notes and I put them throughout the house. I had, I went through three journals within my first 10 months. I went through three journals because I wrote everything down. If I was having a stressful day, I wrote about it, but I always ended each journal entry with positivity because that's key. And no matter how much we try any kind of diet, if we see this as a diet, we are going to go back to doing what we were doing before. But if we see this as a new lifestyle, you're never going to go back because I used to wear a size 3X and my jeans are a size two. I can wear smalls now. I've never in my life been the size ever. Like even through high school, middle school, ever, I've never been the size. And having the energy and being able to run and being able to get on the floor on my knees and then get up and and if I have to play on the floor puzzles with my granddaughters, I can. And this summer, this past summer, we went to North Carolina and I got to take my grandbabies to the beach and uh, they were playing soccer. They're huge soccer. You know, well, we're Portuguese. We're all huge soccer uh, fans. But um, my husband goes, oh, did they bring a soccer ball? I said, yeah, we got a soccer ball. He goes, oh, I'm going to go play with them. I said, I want to play too. And my friend, we were at her house at the beach and my friend took pictures and it made me cry. It made me cry because I had never been able to do any of that, Lally. And this way of eating, I was able not only to play soccer in the sand, running on the beach with my granddaughters, but I had more energy than they did, you know? Um, so... It just, if I could give anyone anything, and I tell my girls this all the time, I want to give them the love inside that I have for myself now. Because a lot of us, when we first start, we don't believe in ourselves. We think we've tried every diet in the book, nothing happens. I starve myself, I don't lose weight, um, and then I lose weight, and then two weeks later, I gained all that weight plus more back, and it gets very depressing, and it has to do with changing your mindset and the way you see yourself in the mirror, the way you speak to yourself, so I always suggest a journal, write down your emotions, write down your struggles, and end it in a positive note. No matter what happens during the day, today is today, tomorrow's a new day. If you slipped and you've had a stressful day and you got home and your kids were eating Oreos and you pick up an Oreo cookie without thinking and you eat it and then you go, oh my God, look what I just did. I'm so stupid. Stop, stop. So you slipped and made a mistake. We chalk it up to, that was one Oreo cookie. It's not going to kill you. But don't go back and eat the sleeve of Oreo cookies. Don't go back and then eat the cookies and then eat the chips. No, you slipped. So you made a little mistake. Tomorrow's a new day. We move on from that point in time. We move forward, never looking back. Because if we cannot see who actually stares us in the mirror, because when I was heavy, I can tell you that I would look in the mirror, but I would 
look past me. I would not look at me, okay? I could say beautiful things about you, but I could never say beautiful things about me. The only thing I could say about myself was, you know what? I have pretty eyes and I have a great heart. I have a good heart. You know, my grandmother used to always say that to me. She goes, Jelsh, you're so beautiful. And I said, no, I'm not. And she'd say to me, yes, you are. You're beautiful because your beauty radiates from the inside out. And uh, I wish you can see that. And that's what I want for everybody. I want everybody to see the beauty that stares back at them in the mirror, no matter what weight we are. We are beautiful, worthy, enough. And you know what? And we always have been. We just forgot. We put everyone else and everything else in our lives first that we forgot to take care of the person that's most important. And that's us. We're important. Because if we don't take care of us, we're so worried about our family. Well, we're going to let our family bury us because the way we, if we keep going, they're going to bury us. So what's the point? We're not going to be here anyway, right? I can't, I can't make this. And then you get excuses. Well, I can't do this because my family's not keto. I can't do this because my husband wants me to eat with him at seven o'clock. I can't do this because, well, stop with the excuses because it's not your husband's journey. It's not your parents' journey. It's your journey. And you have to make the changes for yourself because you too, if they're important, you are more so. You are worthy of being a healthier version of yourself. And if you stick to it, I guarantee you, you will get the weight off and you will feel so much better and you won't care about going back. You won't. And you can keep it away. Keep it from coming back to you. That's um, right. Maria, um, all these years that you have been on keto and uh, when you walk and when you go about and see another person where you see yourself before um how, how do you feel how i want to reach out to them and tell them that they can do it but you know you got to be careful too um because <laughs> you don't want to offend someone so uh, i'll give you an example i uh there's a 7-eleven which is a little convenience store down the street from me and I stop there and I get my power aid drinks and my quake, which is my energy drink. Uh, for when I do my long extended fast, I drink an, en uh, an energy drink also. Do I, need, do I need it? No, but I like it. So I drink it. But, um, and I have to be careful too, because when I do drink it, sometimes Lally, uh, I can't drink anything like that after five, like coffee. I shouldn't drink coffee or the energy drink because what happens? You can't sleep. And yes. my mind's always working like you, like that's where I get my journal and I just write and write and write because my mind, I'm wide awake. It's like midnight and I'm still wide awake going, okay, what should I do? You know, I'll, I'll go do some laundry. Or I'll go do this. Okay. <laughs> stop. Relax, Maria. Calm down. Um, so I'm always on the go because I do have so much energy, you know? Um, but you know what? I get, if I even get five or six hours of sleep, it's actually good sleep where before I would go to sleep and sleep six, seven hours, but it was restless sleep. So it's really not, you're not sleeping, sleeping, you're not resting, but this way of eating and the way you start feeling, if you get five or six hours of sleep, you're actually, I, I'm dead to the world for that five, six hours. I'm not waking up throughout the night. Uh, stomach, getting up, having bathroom issues, none of that. And that has a lot to do with that. So when I, I was at 7-Eleven and I forget why, oh, the girl was talking about, or she saw me every day and she says to me, did you lose weight? You lost a lot of weight. Like, I mean, more from the last time I saw you. I said, no, I haven't lost any more weight. And she said, no, no, I haven't seen you like in three weeks because she had been gone. And I said, no, I promise you, I haven't. And she goes, 
you lost a lot of weight. And I said, I said, well, I've lost over 130 pounds. Well, how did you do that? So because she asked me, then I share. And on my phone, I have my before pictures that I did my collages with my book. And, um, and I showed her. And you know what she said to me? She goes, that's not you. I said, yes, it is. She goes, no, that is not you. That's not you. And I said, no, sweetheart, it is. That's me. And let me show you some more. So I actually showed her pictures throughout my journey of my transformation. She's now lost 53 pounds. So I do try to, yes, it's great. And I do try to motivate and inspire people and tell them that it's not hard. It's just a change of your mindset. It's the, I'm going to have a, a Coke. Instead of a Coke, why don't you have a bottle of water or Powerade Zero or Gatorade Zero or tea, uh, unsweetened tea? Because then you have people down South, when you say tea, they think it's this much sugar and this much tea. So right. I always say unsweetened tea because you don't want them to put a pound of sugar in it, you know? So that's how I get um, to the people. And I do lives every Thursday when my daughter was here, I kind of cut back a little bit. Um, but I do lives every Thursday where I cook. And then I talk to people about um, minding their heart and not their minds and struggles and stress and how to deal with things like that. And, um, and tell them that I believe in them because sometimes and many of us, all we need is someone to be there to give us a little push, to let us know that we're worthy because we forget, we forget that we're all those things. And um, I think my goal, if I can give anyone anything is the self-love and self-care because we have to have self-love and self-care. And yeah. I remind everybody that it's not just what you're putting in your mouth is how you treat yourself mentally, verbally. It's how we treat ourselves, not only what we're putting in our mouth, but what we say and think of ourselves. We get rid of the negativity and we replace it with positivity and just watch the scale. I mean, the scale does not define us, but you'll watch the scale numbers go down. You will see that your clothes that you had in your closet that hasn't fit you in 10 years now are too big. How great is that? Right? Yes. How so great is that? I'm excited when you start losing. Just, you know, hold it and just watch it keep on going down and going down. Keep going, keep going. Yeah. Um, because what happened to me was I was uh, 12 or 10 and then I started losing weight. I became an eight. And then when I reached that um, dress size, I started, you know, I, I was so excited because I can wear um, dresses that I used to avoid wearing. So I bought, I bought clothes. And then after uh, uh, maybe three weeks or a month, I became a six and then a four. And then a two, I even reached a zero. And then I, I no, I, I, I wasn't happy with zero because I was, yeah. and so I went back to two and, and I'm maintaining that now. Yeah. So. That's well, it. I understand that because my, my husband, uh, you know, I had said to him that I would, my goal weight was going to be 155, 150 and I was going to stop. So when I got on the scale and I weighed 148, I started maintenance. I didn't tell him. So I remember getting on the scale one day because once I started maintenance, once I got down to 125 pounds, I said to myself, I'm not going to weigh every single week. So I remember I continued doing my extended fasts again, not to lose the weight at that point, but to continue to heal my skin. So I got on the scale and I had lost three pounds and he was behind me. And he goes, what's that number? And I go, I jumped off and I go, oh, nothing, nothing. And I, you know, and he goes, 
you promised that you'd get to a hundred, you wouldn't lose more than a hundred, you know, that you would get to 150 and you wouldn't go down. Little did he know that I had already been way down. You know what I mean? Cause he, he's always been with me heavy. So he, he always says to me, it's like being married to a new woman because he loved me no matter what size I was. Cause I've never been with him skinny. So he had noticed like one time he, he had touched me, like he grabbed me like this, like hugged me from back. And he goes, oh my God, you got something sticking out. And it was my ribs. <laughs> Cause I hide it with my clothes. So my ribs protrude because I got so thin. And he said, you need to gain at least 10 pounds. And I said, no, I need to gain at least three pounds because I had gone down to 122. So he said to me, you lost your butt, you lost your boobs. Um, you got to stop losing weight. And I said to him, I'm maintaining, I'm not losing. This is just the fluke. And it was a fluke. Lally, it took me almost three months to gain the three pounds. Oh, wow. One pound a month. So, it and you know what I did now? I didn't to gain that. I didn't go and eat. Like I could have probably ate potatoes for two days and gained it like in a day uh, or in two days, but I didn't. What I did is I upped my calories and I upped my carbs and I extended my eating window a little bit. So I go five, six hours, seven hours that I think for two weeks and nothing, the scale didn't move. So I was like, okay, uh, I upped it a little bit more. And, and then when I got back to 125, I showed my husband, I said, I'm back to where I used to be. And he said, I think if you were like 130, 135 for your height, it'd be enough because everything with you now is bones. And, and no, because I still have my hips. I mean, I'm European, so we have the hips and stuff. So I've always said I would be happy at 130, but staying at 125, when the summer comes, I'm still, now I'm starting with my exercise and stuff and muscle weighs more than fat. So I'm plan on gaining at least five pounds of muscle to get to 130. But there is nothing wrong. I mean, I don't want to be a zero either, just like you, but it's nice to go to the store and just pick up a pair of pants off of a rack take it home and not even try them on because guess what? It's going to fit you. Where before you go, I went, I had a wedding and I went and I bought a dress and I went into the fitting room and I brought a three X. No, I brought a one X and a two X to the fitting room. And um, I looked at my mom and I said, I don't understand why none of these fit me. So she goes, I'll go get you a 3X. And I think that was the most devastating day of my life when I was like, oh my God, the 1X, I can't even get through here. The 2X got stuck here, you know? And here was a 3X in Lally. It was so tight, the 3X. And I said to my mother, I got to do something, mom. I said, if I keep going this way, I, I'm going to be 400 pounds. What the heck am I doing? What am I thinking? And she said, well, you know, why don't you just try to eat four small little meals a day? And I was like, no, I got to do something. So when I started doing my research and doing the, you know, finding things out and I, you know, then met Amanda and stuff. And, um, and I started, but I took what she did and I made it for me. And like when she met Dr. Berg and Dr. Ali, Dr. Westerman, all of us at the keto summit, she said, if anything, I wish I had followed Maria's model instead of mine, because I would have lost weight a lot faster because I reached half my size in 10 months and two weeks. And not having the hanging skin is amazing. It's amazing. It's, are you going to have a little wrinkle? Yes. But like I tell everybody, I'd rather have the little wrinkle and the little belly sag, the little bitty 
belly sack, I mean, literally little, um, then weigh 265 pounds because that was my heaviest. Um, after three day water fast, weighing at 255.9 was devastating for me because I thought, oh my God, if I keep going, I'm, you know, where's this going to stop? What's going to stop with you in a box? Not being here for anybody that you love and care about. So definitely a, a life changing, life changing for me. It really has been. And continue to maintain because I've been maintaining. I eat more. I eat a lot of keto meals. I have keto desserts now. Once in a while, I'm still not big on, it's not like I have a keto dessert every single day. Maybe I have a keto dessert. I'm going to say two or three times a month. If, if there's an occasion to have it, I don't do um, anything that I bake here. I share with my parents who live upstairs. So that makes it easier for me. Because if I make a cheesecake, I cut it in half, send half of it upstairs. I keep the other half. I take that half and cut it in half, take that half to work. So I only keep for myself for the week or two weeks, however long it lasts, a quarter of my own dessert. And I do that on purpose. Well, first of all, I love to bake and I love to share. And I want people to know that you can enjoy cookies and uh, cheesecake and uh, breads but just make it the right way. So I tend to give a lot of my stuff away to my neighbors, to my friends. And then when they say to me, oh my God, can you share the recipe? You know, how do you make this? And I tell them, listen, just go to my page and the recipes are there. And by the way, it's keto. No way. Yes. Key lime pie, key lime cheesecake. I mean, all these things that people think, well, I love my desserts. I don't want to give up my desserts for the rest of my life. You don't have to. Just make them so you can have them. Enjoy them. And then not have to worry about your sugar is going to spike and you're going to gain five pounds at the end of the week. Because what do we know? We know that it takes us a long time to lose weight, but it takes us a very short time to gain the weight that we lost. True. I agree with you. I could agree more. And um, I've been really, really devastated um, knowing that a lot of, in my country and in your country, um, our staple is rice and we eat a lot of pan de sal or the breakfast bread. So it's just really, really challenging to share this with everyone. But, you know, hearing them hearing them, not just me, but hearing it from you, um, I think it would be making an impact to their lives as well. And uh, I'm gonna be sharing this. Um, I'll make sure that I share your link on this video when I edit it. I I'm gonna be the one to edit it as well. So I'm gonna be including your photos and everything in it. Um, as much as and I, I think you follow, I think you follow me. I don't know if you're on Facebook, but I know you're on Instagram because I follow you and you follow me. Yeah. Um, but I have the same name that's on Instagram is my Facebook uh, also. Okay. And then my website is also. So I have all my transformation pictures in there. Okay. And I also have, if you're going to share this with women and I'm okay with it, I, I am honest to God. Um, the skin pictures, even though that I'm in my bra and my underwear, in the beginning, I was very, like, I just kept that to myself and I did not share. And I remember a woman, Lally, she was down 63, no, I'm so sorry, after the 63, she was down 48 pounds and she quit. She quit because her skin was starting to hang. And I got so emotional when she told me that. And I said to her, no, stop, what are you doing? And she said, Maria, I'm so scared. I don't want a belly and it's gonna hang. I said, oh my God, let me share this with you. And that's when I opened myself up by sharing those pictures because I realized there's so many people out there that are so worried about the hanging skin 
that they stop losing the weight because they feel like they're going to have skin hanging here. The belly's going to hang down here to your knees. And it's not. And I started sharing my pictures and I am not showing anything more. Actually, I show less than what most people do at the beach. But the last picture in my book, um, is what had, I had already lost the, the hundred, you know, almost uh, over 107 pounds, but my skin in these pictures and the pictures that I just took, I think was I think December. I that, the swimsuits. I've yeah. Seen. And you see this difference in the skin. I know. And, I, and people, I know Maria did, what did you do? Where is all the skin? It's so, the intermediate fasting. And that is what I tell everybody. Make yourself, like, for me, I did, I fasted from Saturday at three until I ate again on Tuesday. So I ate Saturday. I didn't eat Sunday. I didn't eat Monday. And people say to me, well, you fasted for 72 hours. Yeah, anywhere between 68 and 72, but that's three days. So you didn't eat for three days? And I said, no. There's seven days in a week. I ate Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. I didn't eat two days. Well, how do you come up with 72 hours? I said, guess what? When you sleep, you're fasting. Those hours count. It just doesn't count when you're awake, you know? So when you go to sleep and you're fasting, those hours count. So I just kept mine every single it was the same days every single week i kept my fast the same every single week all the time and i actually changed it this april no i'm so sorry april of um 2020 i changed it because of that whole i went down the three pounds so i started where i didn't fast for like two weeks to see if I would gain the three pounds that didn't work. So I was like, okay, then I'm just going to go back to fasting because I want to continue to heal my skin. I'm just going to up my calories, up my carbs. And now I'm back to fasting, but I'm eating more. So I don't lose the weight so I can maintain. But if you fast, your skin will continue to heal itself. A lot of people say to me when they see those pictures, did you have skin surgery? Nope. Not one surgery in my, I look at the pictures and I go like this. Oh my God. I went from this to like, my skin is, is like this, you know, just, just from fasting. And I know what you mean about the rice because we're Portuguese. All our meals will either have rice or potatoes. That's the starches, you know. Um, we are hugely based. We love rice. I mean, I love rice. We love rice pudding. And uh, we love rice pudding. And I just made a rice pudding with cauliflower. And I, And before I posted that recipe, you know what I did? I took it upstairs to my mom and dad. I didn't say anything. I made little plates and I gave it to them and it was warm. And my dad goes, Ooh, what do we got? I said, a rouge dos. And he goes, Ooh, a rouge dos. Minha, that's my mom. Minha, give me spoon so I can eat it. So he ate it. He ate the whole thing. My mom ate it. She goes, Oh my God, this is really, really good. And I said, yeah, it's good. And she goes, I'm surprised you made rice pudding. And I said, yes, I did. She goes, How'd you make rice pudding? I thought you said you, you're not going to have rice. I said, it's not rice. My mother goes, it's not. And I told my father it was cauliflower. My father goes, no, it's not. I said, yes, it is. So you could still enjoy it. You know, our, the different ones, you could still enjoy it. So it's what we put in it. Make the cauliflower rice. Tell your friends, cauliflower rice, cauliflower mash. There's different things. We don't have to eat rice constantly or potatoes. We don't. Yeah, I would do all that. I don't want to get cancer. I don't want to die of hypertension and 
all of this. No. So would you safely say that um, keto is sustainable? Um, it's, it can be something that we do from here on out and uh, never stop doing it. And yeah, I, I, to me, it's not a religion, like what you said, it's a lifestyle. Um, it's something that you follow because you want to be here longer. You want to be here for your children and you right. want your grandchildren have grandchildren of themselves. Um, That's right. Right? So um, would you say- And it is very sustainable. It is. It is very sustainable because now with me, I've been doing this since 2019, January of 2019. And now we're in 2021 and I'm still maintaining my weight loss and feeling good about myself. And, and I feel healthy. I get labs done in the beginning. When I first started, my doctor was doing labs, my dog, <laughs> uh, my doctors were doing labs every three weeks because I was anemic and I had low blood, low, low blood sugar. So they want to stop roads. So they wanted, um, to make sure that I was okay. Um, I come from family of high blood pressure cholesterol, diabetes, cancer. Trust me, if you come from a family that has those issues, this way of eating will prevent you from having it. And if you have it, it will take... When, when the doctor told me that my dad only needed to have an injection as needed, and my dad doesn't do full keto. He doesn't. So he still eats some regular food. Um, he's 80 years old and he's very set in his way. So he loves certain things that are still, you know, Portuguese and stuff. And um, so he still has something that I think he shouldn't. But at this point, I've changed so much of what he eats and I've cut him to where he doesn't eat after five and he's lost over 40 pounds and he's off his high blood pressure medicine and he's off his cholesterol. And he's now only taking an injection for his uh, sugar as needed. That's a huge life change. That's huge. My mom's the same thing. She was in a diabetic, but high blood pressure, cholesterol, this way of eating will heal you from the inside out. Imagine the money you will save on medication that you don't have to take. And imagine the health benefits when you start feeling so good, right? That now you have the energy and you're not sitting on the sofa all day long. And uh, you just like, you get, you're tired because you get from the sofa to the kitchen, you're already exhausted. I don't miss those days at all. You know, I don't miss the days of feeling bloated, feeding, feeling moody, because believe it or not, when we are feeding our bodies all those carbs, we are moody, we have headaches, we have aches in our joints. And it's not because we're getting old and it's not because we're fat. It's actually because what we're feeding our bodies and what we're feeding our bodies is little by little, we're poisoning our bodies with all this stuff that we've been lied to for so many decades of what, oh, you know, eat four times a day, have a little bit of rice, have a little bit of potatoes, you know, eat only a half of a baked potato. Well, no, because it's so high in carbs, you're still not doing your body justice. So you want to keep the, the high carbs food out of your daily routine. And we can all do this, all of us can. There's like, you know, the, and there's no overthinking it. To me, if you start overthinking it, you're just gonna make it harder for yourself. By meters, by strips. I didn't do any of that. I didn't, uh, I remember getting strips because I was at the store and I saw it and I said, I'm gonna test myself to see if I'm in ketosis. And I think I tested myself a couple of days, one week, and then another couple of days the following week. And I still have the whole thing. And that's over two and a half years old in my, 
in my cabinet. So I don't, I just don't. I didn't spend any money on it, extra apps. I didn't spend any money on that stuff. I spent the money on the food, the protein, the lettuce, the vegetables, the good oils, coconut oil. Uh, I got rid of all my vegetable oil. I got rid of margarine. I only cook with butter, olive oil, and coconut oil. And that's it. It's really simple. Um, avoid those oils. And that's right. Start feeling happier. And, and absolutely. And you do. And you do. Yes. Um, Marie, I want to keep you, but I know that your dog is missing you a lot already. And she wants to go outside. You can't see her, but she keeps putting her head <laughs> on top of, of my day? arm. Is that time of day where you should be walking her out? What's yes. the name of your dog? Can we Rosie. meet her? Rosie. Yeah, come here. Rosie, come here. Come here, girl. Come here. She's a big girl. Hold on. <laughs> Rosie. Come on, say hi. Oh, say wow. hi. You see her? Oh, wow. Hey, Rosie. Hey, Rosie. I'm, we're look, look. She's a good girl. She's I'm a good girl. She's a rescue. I, oh. She's a rescue. Now she's talking to me. See, I picked her up. Now she won't let me talk. Oh, okay. You go outside? Um, Maria, I would geez. like to share your link um, with us. So maybe um, my friends at this Roptimist, my sisters, I call them my sisters, will be able okay. to follow you. And okay. I'm sharing your photos and um, intermittently showing your links um, because we want more people to know what we are doing right now, what right. this process is all about, um, what is ketogenic diet made up, and what it's going to be doing to our bodies and you will be helping them indirectly and we do hope that in the future you will be able to speak before all of them maybe oh, i would love that busy yes i would i may be able to gather them and you know have to listen to you and uh, learn from you um and maybe later on there will be it's it's for me we don't have to change everyone. If we change right. one or two persons, one or two women, that is already an achievement and they can pay that forward to someone else. Right, right. right. And, and, and not only that, now, if, if you ever want to do something like this again, and I know it's our time difference, I don't mind, I get up really, Rosie, stop, stop. Uh, I don't mind getting up earlier because I already get up early. So if it's like five o'clock or six o'clock in the morning, or even if it's later at night for me, but it's during the day for you, I will do whatever it needs to so we can reach as many, because this is, here, here's the key. If you reach two people and those two people reach, each of them reach two people and it keeps going, we're going to be a healthier version of ourselves and we're going to be a lot happier and we're going to help as many and continue to help as many. So absolutely, I'll whatever you need, just let me know. Maria, you're very, very kind to us and uh, you're very generous with your time and your patience and all of your knowledge, sharing it with us. And we, from the bottom of our hearts, are very, very grateful to you. We wish oh. you and your family good health always. And Thank you. from the Philippines all the way to Connecticut, did I pronounce yes. it right? <laughs> Right. Um, I send you the love and the energy that is overflowing right now from my very oh. heart to yours. Thank you. And I hope Thank that you. God keeps you safe always. So Maria, I'm so excited to share this with everyone. And in behalf of the Suboptimist International of the Philippines region, we would like to thank you in advance because this oh, you're very welcome thank you a lot it's not easy to share your time um on top of your busy schedule but we're so fortunate to you know somehow s have stolen a little bit of your time um yes it's not it's, it's that's what i'm here for because i'm a huge believer in that's what my goal is is to inspire and motivate other people to be a better and healthier version of themselves so Whatever time we need to work it out, we will. Thank you, Maria. You're, You're welcome, Lau. Very, very beautiful. I love your hair and red. Oh, thank you. Much. Thank you.
so beautiful you. inside and outside. Thank I'm you. Afterwards. Yes, and uh, I hope you continue feeling this really good um, inner peace with our new right. lifestyle. Thank right, you. Right. You're yeah. very welcome, Lally. Thank we you so you much. Here and just let me know. Yes, thank you so much. Bye, Rosie. Yeah, I'm going to put her outside. Okay. We'll go outside. She's already ready have to a, go. Have a good walk and a relax. You too. With Rosie and um, I'll try to you have together. You have a nice sleep and it was beautiful seeing you, your beautiful face. I miss your red lipstick. <laughs> Remember? Remember <laughs> the lipstick? Oh, you never wow. forget that. I never, yeah. girl, I have a memory of an elephant. I don't forget. <laughs> like that is like, I went up to you and I said, oh my God, you said I was beautiful. And I was like, oh my God, I, you're, you're beautiful. You're gorgeous. Your lipstick. And I was like, I have that picture of us. And I tell I my know. husband all the time, I think she's so gorgeous. I think I stole it too. I, I, I tried to screen grab it. I kept it. Yeah. Oh, I'll send it to you. I could send you our pictures because I have two of them. I have two of them. Yeah. I so I'm going to go so I could take her out. I hope that the COVID will ease up soon so we can see each other and I can do this. I hope so too. I really do. I would like to thank Maria for joining us today. And I would like to send a message to everyone who is, um, um, going through what we went through before. Um, like for myself, I was pre-diabetic before I started my new lifestyle. I would prefer to call it that way instead of calling it a, a keto diet. It's not just really a diet. It's where you change everything and it changes you, entirely changes you. Um, it changed me for the better. I would consider it that way. I have um, a better relationship with food. Um, I don't easily give in anymore. And I know when it's bad for me and I try to avoid it. And I know that I'm avoiding these foods because I have to. It's not because I can, but because I know that I have to. And it's now very natural for me to be selective and to be thinking of the effects that it will give my body. So I just don't want that anymore. And it's a choice for me. And just like Maria, who uh, was overweight, excessively overweight before she started, um, she started it because she realized that she had to do something. And it's never too late to do something our bodies are very complex and they heal as you go along. But you have to start somewhere and you should start as soon as possible. And it's not really expensive to do these special uh, meal preparations. I think it's inexpensive when you are gonna think of your future being hospitalized or being helpless and uh, giving that burden down to your children. I don't want to be that burden to them. And I want to be growing old and feeling better and better every day. And there are studies that showing the longevity effects or uh, the longevity benefits of the this low carb diet. Um, remove the sugar from your diet, remove sucrose, remove the fructose, and those complex carbohydrates, um, get rid of them. You have to get rid of them because they are not good for your body. They are slowly destroying your system. They begin with the gut. They mess up your microbiome, the healthy flora of your body, of your gut. They destroy it. It ages you to the cellular level and you want that to stop. And stopping now is never too late.